the fact that it that if I were to style some things using uh, .NET controls and style other things via CSS, then it might be confusing as far as maintaining it. Like where you know how does this why does this look the way it is? You have to look in two places, and that's definitely true. That, that's a good point. Um, there would even be a bigger point if you were on like a larger team where one person was responsible for the look of it and another person was responsible for the, the guts of it, you know, the, the ASP.NET coding. Because then you might have a visual designer that doesn't know anything about ASP.NET that is trying to do things style-wise that the, 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 the Visual Studio code. So, good point. Did I see another hand up? Okay. Let's scan through these though. One thing you can do, you can put a path separator here. Character uses separate parts of the path. Not sure what that means. Um, where's the ones I want to get? Um, Could you go over the dynamic ones? There you go. That one's special. Which one? Dynamic? Cover style. Yes, sir. You can set style when um, it's hover. Uh, it, uh, it's hovered over a item in the dynamic part of the menu. So I could set a background color when I hover over it. Where's the ones I'm looking for, though? Oh, orientation is the first one. Is it going to be oriented vertically or horizontally? So I can set this as horizontal. Maximum display, uh, dynamic display levels, we're setting how many levels this menu goes at, at the most. In this, this case, it says three. The one I'm looking for, too, oh, static display levels. This is how many levels of the menu we're going to show even if the user is not mousing over it. So I have one level, which means it's only going to show me that NFL level. I could change this to two, and now it will show me NFL, AFC, and NFC. Or I could even say three, and it will show me really all of those links if I wanted to. I'm going to set it to two, so I see the NFL's page, the NFL's link, the AFC's link, and the NFC's link. That's the kind of thing that I probably would set through the, the, the ASP.NET controls, the, the, the number of, of levels that I always want to see and so on. That makes sense to me to do it there, but I suppose you could also do it via CSS. Now if we click on this, we go and... Now we see this, where NFC, AFC, and, or NFL, AFC, and NFC are always there, and as I mouse over, I get that going down. Now, again, all kinds of style considerations that we could put in. If we want to put a gap on all these, we can. How do we know how to apply style to these? Well, again, we saw we could put style in we could put certain style attributes into the ASP.NET control. To put regular plain old CSS, it helps if we know what these things are styled as. So, these are styled as a collection of ULs. That correspond to the level that it is. So there's a UL for level one. Interestingly enough, we have a UL for level three. Oh, there's a level two down here. All right. So if I wanted to do something CSS wise, I see that that's an LI within the nav section. So I could go in and create a style. And I could say, am 
my nav section, any li should have a margin right of 50 pixels. Let's go and apply this style sheet to the master page. Now when we run this, we should have a bigger gap between those. All right. It's all about the hooks into CSS. This is where it's critical for you to know what HTML gets generated from your .NET control. All right. Now in the case that we had here, we had a menu control. If we look at the, the, the ASP.NET, code for this, we have a menu control with items those get translated into what? Well, we don't have to remember it, right? We can right mouse and view source and see what it generated. So we can see that it generated ULs and LIs and all that for navigation. All right. And now that I know that, hmm, these menu items are really just LIs, then I know how I can style them. I can make LIs within the nav section have a certain appearance. All right. Remember back your basic CSSs with selectors. With selectors, uh, for selectors rather, um, in CSS, simply put, your, your basic selectors are number one, HTML tags, classes, and IDs. In addition, we can style HTML tags within other HTML tags, or HTML tags, or classes within an HTML tag, or whatever. So we can style, like I did here, and say any li within the nav section we want to treat a certain way. So if we spent more time on this, we would get um, what we want, um, you know, and get the appearance that, that, that we want and, 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 and play it. But it does give us a big head start on, on getting it, um, uh, on, on getting a decent navigation. I'm going to go and create... Um, let's see, a handful more pages. I want to create an AFC page. I want to create an AFC North page. I want to create a Browns and Steelers page. All right, so I'll create this many. Four more. <laughs> All right. So. And I call this one AFC. I do want it to inherit from the master page. Which master page? That one. And I'll just go in for each of these and just put like an H2 tag that says what the page is about. These are matching the um, names that I, re uh, remembering the names that I put in when I created the navigation. So I can see it being real helpful if you're doing this with a team, like to, to have like a, like even our notebook piece of paper or something. This is what we use for everything. So, you know. 
Yeah. Well, and, and we'll and we'll we'll see that in a second of what, of, of what we can do in a second. Um, So there we have our four pages at least. All right. And if we run this, we can go and navigate through and get the Browns page, get the Steelers page, AFC North, AFC, and back to the home page. All right, there's another kind of control that can be used for menus, all right? And again, I, I may put it on the same page as this, but that doesn't mean that you need to have a page that has both these controls on it. I'm simply showing you two ways of doing a navigation. You, you know, you don't need both of them on the same page. And that's a tree view. A tree view is much like the view that you get in Windows Explorer, at least the view that you used to get in Windows Explorer. I think they still have Windows Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it looks the same, but let me show you what I mean. All right, notice that I have, I have sort of a, a, a tree hierarchy here that my documents, in documents is my documents. In that, there is that folder. We're focusing on just this part of it, not, not on this part. Underneath my shapes, underneath my websites, Visual Studio, backup files, code snippets, and so on. Notice that this is very similar in that there's a hierarchy. Right? There's a root node, and there are things underneath it. Um, the difference being that I don't mouse over it to get the branches to appear. I click on it. And when I click on it, it stays until I click it off. All right? So if I expand this folder, I see the subfolders underneath it until I click it off. Then it goes away. So that's the difference basically between a tree and a menu. The other difference is, is if I'm not mistaken, a tree can only have one root node, where a menu can actually have uh, multiple root nodes, um, I think. We'll, we'll find out if, if I'm lying or not. But we can implement the same navigation structure through a tree. So we'll go and we'll do that. Again, not that you need both of them, but um, just to see and, and compare and contrast. And I probably will only do part of this on uh, part of the, I won't do the whole menu because it's, it's going to be very similar. I won't duplicate the whole menu. Um, so I'll go and I'll put another nav tag. And I'll drag into that. A tree view, and I can edit the nodes, <coughs> I can add a root node. Actually, I guess it allows me to add multiple root nodes too, so it's not really a tree, but we're splitting hairs here. So I could go in and I could do a link for NFL, navigate URL, nfl.aspx.
You don't have to click OK after each one. I can add a child. I can add another child. And this will be AFC. And the navigate URL is afc.aspx. This is NFC. And this is nfc.aspx. Underneath the uh, AFC, I'll add a child, and I'll just I'll just do the one here. I'll do North, and underneath North, I will do the Browns and the Steelers. essentially have the menu two different ways. One accomplished via mouse over, the other accomplished by clicking. So I can go, this is a tree view. In fact, let me go, let me go and put. <clears throat> let me put a label on these guys. So H2. Menu. So put some space between them. Okay, so there's the menu view that we've done before. The tree view, we can go and we can collapse or we can expand it. Once we expand it, it stays expanded. Again, we have some properties with this that we can set. One of them is, if you notice, the tree view started out completely expanded. So I can go in and Yeah, that shows the icon next to it. Okay, come on. Let's go through these one at a time. expand depth, fully expand. Or I could pick that I want to see only one level, or I could pick that I wanted to see only the initial, the root node, which is zero. Then I would have to expand it for it to be expanded. So we can pick how far we want it initially to be expanded. Well, that's a great question. I would think it does, but let's check. Actually, no. It comes up as a table.
beginning of class about binding these controls to a data source. All right? And we're going to see our example to that. We're going to bind our, and we can do this either with a menu or a tree view, and we might do both just, just for laughs because we're having so much fun doing both of them the first time. Um, we're going to create a site map file. All right? A site map file is what? Well, it's a file that contains a list of the pages on the site. Um, and it, it, it shows the hierarchy of the pages on the site. Why is that important? Because it's nice to give the user breadcrumbs. Okay? What are breadcrumbs? on a web page. A way to get back to where you were or a way to find out yeah. where you go. <laughs> in other words, in this example, if I was on the Browns page, the breadcrumbs would look like this. NFL, AFC, North, Brown. Because that's how I got to the page. Underneath NFL, there's AFC. Underneath AFC is North. Underneath North is Browns. So it's a nice little comfort level for the user to like sort of know how they got there. So if they don't find what they want there, and again, it might not be a good example in this case, because I would assume if you clicked on the Browns page, you'd want information about the Browns. But if you were shopping, let's say, and you had sporting goods, Shoes, Nike, model, one, two, three, four. If I decide, hey, I don't like those shoes, let's see what other Nike has, I could go back to the Nike page. Or I could say, nah, I don't want to buy Nike, I want to go somewhere else, and I could click back to the shoes. All right? Um, I've heard it said, you know, a, a good navigation system lets someone know where they are. All right, so like the title of the page and, and labels on the page that say where they actually are. How they got there, that's what the breadcrumbs are. If you remember your Hansel and Gretel fairy tales, all right. And lastly, how to get to other places. And that's your basic menu scheme. So. We want to provide this capability, and essentially, if we think about it, that capability, or the data for that capability, is contained in this structure, right? We just need to put it somewhere so that we can refer to it. And where we put it is a sitemap file. So, let's go and create a sitemap file. File, new, file. Sitemap. And the sitemap file is an XML file. What is an XML file? Well, an XML file is a file that uses markup to describe a particular kind of data. What do I mean by markup? I mean the kinds of tags that you have in HTML. All right. Starting tags, ending tags, attributes, nesting, all that kind of things. All those kinds of things are, are what I mean by markup language. So what are some of the rules of HTML? HTML isn't exactly XML, but it's close to it. So we can use this as a starting point. What are some of the rules of HTML? Well, there's only one root node. There's one tag that contains everything. All right? And in HTML, that is the HTML tag. That's the one tag that contains everything. What are the other rules? Well, 
It's not really a rule in HTML, but in my mind, it's a very good practice to say that every start tag has to have an ending tag. All right? In XML, that is a rule. All right? So every starting tag has to have an ending tag. Tags have to be nested properly. That is, if a tag starts within a tag, it needs to end within a tag. And lastly, there's rules about what kind of tags you can put where. For example, in HTML, you would not, you don't put an H1 tag in the head section of your page, right? H1 tags belong in the body section of your page, all right? You have to put an LI, a list item, within a UL tag. You can't have an LI just hanging out there on its own, all right? So those are some rules in HTML. In the sitemap, the rules are real simple. You got a sitemap that wraps around everything. Within that sitemap, there will be one sitemap node. This corresponds to sort of the root of the website. There's a root node here within the sitemap. That's the home page of the site, if you will. And then there can be as many as you want sitemap nodes inside of that. And they can be nested however you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create the sitemap for our um, NFL page. Alright. So, what's the root of this? What's the URL of the root of this? Default.aspx. Alright. What is the title of it? I don't know, NFL homepage. What's the description of it? I don't know, NFL homepage. All right. What do we have underneath this? We have an AFC and an NFC. So I'll put an AFC.ASPX. That's the AFC's homepage. Title AFC. AFC. I can do the same thing for NFC. Actually, I'm going to do the whole AFC and then I'll, I'll well, yeah, I'll do the whole NFC and then, then we'll do the NFC because it's just going to be a matter of copying. All right. Now, within the NFC, I'm sorry, within the AFC, there are some subpages, right? There's a north, south, east, and west. This is where we're going to have to do this, right? This is a start tag and end tag rolled into one. We have to change that and separate this out like this. We have to actually explicitly put the end tag in. Why? Because there's tags that are part of the AFC section. Namely, there is 